We have a very special guest with us, Miles, at this moment. Well, not exactly with us, around us. President of the United States, Bill Clinton, is over at the Vehicle Assembly Building, right over here, a couple hundred yards away from us. And uh, we have the privilege of uh, saying good morning to him, welcoming him on behalf of CNN, at any rate, uh, to Cape Canaveral and this launch. Good to see you, Mr. President. Good morning, Walter, and good morning, Miles, uh, I'm, or good afternoon. I'm delighted to be here. They say, uh, they say, Mr. President, that there are more visitors here than at any time since the moon launchings, the moon flights, and, uh, it, it, and that includes the President of the United States. Uh, what's particularly appealing to you about this flight? Well, of course, there's the John Glenn factor. Uh, Senator Glenn is a very good personal friend of Hillary's and mine, as well as uh, uh, an ally, a colleague, and uh, like all Americans, I'm thrilled that he's going up today. Uh, but also, you know, this really is uh, the, the last launch before we begin to put the International Space Station up. So John Glenn began this first phase of our space program, and he's, he's ending it uh, just before we start on the space station. So uh, it's, it's very exciting. It's important for the space program. But it's a great day for America, a great day for our senior citizens. Uh, and uh, I hope that all Americans share the exuberance that I feel today. You know, some naysayers say, Mr. President, that this flight at Glenn's is your reward uh, to him for his stalwart support of yours during his <laughs> years in the Senate. Anything to that? No. I, I, I've always wanted John to be able to go back as long as I've known he's wanted to. Uh, but if I'd had my druthers, he'd be home in Ohio running for re-election right now. <laughs> and yeah. uh, he, he said he was too old to serve another term in the Senate, but he wasn't too old to go into space. And, Right. I think the American people should know that the decision to send him was made strictly by the book. I, I had no uh, role in it. Uh, he had to pass the strenuous physical exams, uh, and then for each experiment he's going through, he had to prove that he was uh, qualified and able to do that. I think this is very important. You know, one of the most important benefits that the American people derive from our space program uh, is the whole rush of discoveries we get that help us here on Earth, environmental discoveries, healthcare discoveries of all kinds. We've got all kinds of medical uh, uh, scanning equipment today that we wouldn't have, but for the space program, we've got protective clothing that people who are super sensitive to the sun can wear that we wouldn't have but for the space program. So uh, we're gonna get a lot out of John Glenn going up there today, and uh, I think the country is well served by doing it, and goodness knows for a lifetime of service to us in the air and on the ground, he's earned this chance. You know, they, they say that President Kennedy uh grounded Glenn uh, after his first flight because he didn't want to risk a, 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 the death of a hero out there on a second flight. Would you have made that decision? Well, I don't know. I can't say because I wasn't there then. And <laughs> it's easy to second guess, but I'll say this. I think that uh, John Glenn going up today is a very good thing for America. We're going to learn a lot from it, and we're all going to, I think, be thrilled by it. And I'm just glad he was brave enough to do it. You know, out there on pad 39A, Mr. President, uh, there to the right, uh, to the south of the 39B from which this flight will take place, there's a shuttle scheduled to take into orbit in just a few months. The first parts of the planned American-Russian Joint International Space Station, uh, almost a small city permanently in space. Well, now the Russia has this desperate economic situation uh, that endangers that schedule. It looks like we may have to put in a lot of money, a lot of money, to try to keep that space station on schedule, yes. the construction of it. Uh, are we prepared to do that? Well, Walter, if, uh, if it were required, I would be uh, supportive of it, uh, and I would uh, be happy to talk to the congressional leaders in both parties. You know, our space program has been a great investment. It's had hardly any increase in funding since I became president. But we've gone from two launches to eight launches a year. We've dramatically cut costs. Uh, NASA is the sort of the, the, the star, the poster child of Vice President Gore's reinventing government campaign, and we're getting a lot out of it. If we were required now to help the Russians during this difficult period, which will not last forever, uh, so that they could continue to participate. I would be in favor of that. I think that, that it's very important that we have the Europeans, the Japanese, the Canadians, and the Russians in the space station venture. Uh, I've been here, I've been over the space station uh, project many times in great detail in Houston. I've been uh, twice, I've been down there to look at that. And I think we're doing the right thing with this space station and we need to stay with it. 
Mr. President, it's Miles O'Brien. I have a question for you, but first I want to check the countdown clock for our viewers for just a moment. We have now entered into a hold, a 10-minute hold. We are at T-minus T minus 20 minutes and holding. The hold began at 1.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It will end at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And then we'll count down again to nine minutes, another 10-minute hold at that point. Once again, to remind our viewers, this is simply a way of NASA keeping up with uh, the important business at hand and making sure everybody's doing their job in time. Mr. President, I'm just curious, are you nervous? Oh, a little bit. <laughs> I think that uh, it's part of the excitement. I'm a little nervous, but I've got great confidence in these people. I've, uh, I've had a lot of great honors as president to meet people who serve our country, but meeting the people who are in the space program uh, the astronauts, those who work on the ground, those who plan these missions, uh, they've done everything they can possibly do, and they would never compromise uh, an iota of safety or reliability just because uh, Hillary and I and all the rest of the world are here through the media. Uh, I feel good about this, but yes, I'm nervous and I'm excited. I feel like a, a kid at his first Christmas. I'm very excited about this. Uh, Mr. President, Pre President Bush of uh, 1989 proclaimed uh, the national goal to send uh, humans to the planet Mars by the year 2019. That's the 50th anniversary of Neil Armstrong's first step onto the moon. Uh, do you affirm that goal for the Mars mission? Well, let me say, what we're doing now will help us uh, once we get to the position of evaluating that. I don't want to either affirm or renounce it. I, what I think we should do is to recognize that what we have now is a set of very focused goals in our space program. Uh, we are working on the space station. We are working on the shuttle. We are working on space transportation. We are working on things that tell us about our environment on Earth. And then we're doing these special projects, the Hubble telescope, which is magnificent. And we did the Mars Pathfinder mission uh, on, you remember, July the 4th of last year. And so uh, we're going to see how we are. Let's get the space station up and going and uh, evaluate what our long-term long -term prospects are. I'll tell you this, I am for the continued aggressive exploration of space uh, in ways that are uh, high quality, cost effective, and that will benefit us here on Earth. And I hope that we can have, as a result of this slide today, even more broad-based American support from all Americans of all parties and all walks of life for our mission in space. It's still very, very important. Mr. President, as a journalist, I think I'd be remiss at this moment in time if I didn't ask you what your advisors are telling you about the results of next Tuesday's election. Uh, the truth is, they don't know. <laughs> We've got uh, an extraordinary number of very, very close elections. Uh, in this two-year period, uh, the members of the other party raised, uh, I think, uh, $100 million more than our folks did. But we've got good candidates and an extremely good grassroots effort, I think a good agenda. The only thing I think I should say today, to avoid being too political, is that it's a very important election. And I would hope that every American who is eligible to vote would go and vote in that election. If you look at this space launch today, this is a triumph of American democracy. It was made possible by the elected representatives of the American people supporting the space program. And it is just one more example of why it's so important for citizens to stand up and be counted on election day. So if you feel patriotic when you see John Glenn and the others go up in space today, then keep that patriotic feeling till next Tuesday and go and vote for the candidate and the programs and the issues of your choice. All right. Mr. President, thank you so much for being with us on thank CNN you, today. And we hope you enjoy the launch. Thank you. I will. I think I ought to say just one other thing because I'm talking to CNN. I know that I speak for a lot of people when I express my thanks to the late John Holloman for the work he did to advance our cause in space. And I know that all of you will be thinking about to him and his family today. And uh, I thank CNN for giving such a high profile to our space mission. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. President, for those words. Miles and I were going to dedicate this broadcast at an appropriate time to the memory of John Holloman, who was a space expert at CNN, was uh, as, as skilled as Miles, planned to be in this anchor chair, and who was killed, unfortunately, in an automobile accident just a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this broadcast is dedicated to the memory of John Holloman. All right, it's uh, time for us to take a break. When we return, we'll check in and see how the crowds are doing along the beaches. CNN's Mark Potter there, Goodyear blimp hovering overhead. With the clock holding at 20 minutes, Stay with us.